around the time when I was still dealing in the Mano Swamp, there was a lot of conversations because there was there was a handful of gals that were in it. There was generally heavily made up, low cut tops, titties pushed out, selling how to get the gal courses, right? So using flirty marketing techniques uh, to gullible, persuadable guys that thought that if they just bought their course or followed their whatever step program, uh, women would start throwing themselves at them. And of course, that would have never happened. Um, because that's what sirens do, right? And when I collab with the guys in the Mano Swamp at the time, they all pretty much agreed that these women don't offer a lot of value. They can potentially be dangerous because they mislead guys and they wouldn't collab with them. They were, for the most part, ignored. Um, you know, they were just thoughts that sold courses on how to get the gals, right? Now, I think it was around late 2019. I might be mistaken. It might have been around 2020, but it was around 2019. I think probably Myron was one of the first guys to set up a podcast studio where they would sit down a bunch of gals at a table. So very innovative, totally different. Um, it was a new thing. I mean, I've known, sorry, I've known Myron for years prior to that. He was part of my community. He was one of my uh, mentees. I think overall he's done wonderful for himself. So that's good. And he, and he carved out this new genre where podcasting, sitting, sitting down at a table, a bunch of women. Now, that quickly evolved into entitled, bratty, delusional, usually drunk women being used as an example and getting schooled in front of camera, which, which brought in a lot of eyes because that's red meat. People like drama. <laughs> they love chaos. They like a train wreck. You drive down a highway and traffic starts to slow down because your ways pops up, accident up ahead. And then sure enough, you get up there and there's a fucking train wreck on the side of the road and everybody's got to go and look at it, even though it's off the side of the road. Even the other lane coming the other way, not blocking, no traffic block, also has to slow down to have a look what happened over there. That's that's human nature. They, human nature loves chaos. It loves red meat. So the sit-down podcast studio model was great for capitalizing on, on that. But if I'm being honest, it was a total clown show. Okay, but it does get a lot of views, right? Like it's 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 chaos. It's it it's a lot of things. Anyway, so they had a whole bunch of success. And it's now one of the fastest growing segments in the Mano Swamp. You'll now start to see a lot more of these podcast tables, guests sitting around the table, usually with gals sitting at the table and a so-called expert that's going to guide you through these spaces, often using the women as an example on the show. Sometimes they're made to look quite bad, sometimes not so much. Um, but it's, it's dudes talking to dudes about relationships, using thirst traps and podcast studio to get men's attention is what it boils down to. It's all about getting your eyes and women do that. The prettier the women, the more eyes it'll get from the beauty standpoint, the more chaos that ensues from bratty entitled average sort of women, the more red, you know, eyes you're going to get on the red meat too. Now, what was interesting was the gals saw an opportunity to do the very same thing. Swarms of them came in, created their own shows not looking to help men, and I'll tell you why I know this, because when you listen to the conversations, they're the exact same talking po points, no innovation whatsoever that have already been used by, you know, your, your favorite male creators that have been around for a while or have, have cooked up a lot of these ideas. Nothing new. It's, it's like, I get these clips sent to me a lot of the times from people. Please don't do that. I'm not interested in watching thoughts talking about, um, you know, men's matters. And I've, of course, clicked through and I have to watch them because I'm like, okay, what's this? And it's the same fucking thing. Like they're using the exact verbiage that's already been used. I might have said it. Somebody else in the space might have said it. But it's just a regurgitated uh, message. And they're not there to, to help you with your struggles. They're there for the attention and the money. Women have no idea what men struggle with. They, they just don't. They, it's nice when they pretend to know or they pretend to care or they might express a little bit of empathy, but at the end of the day, they truthfully don't know and they really don't care. I've said this many times. Women don't give a shit about your struggles. They hang, they hang out at the finish line and they're picking the winners. That's what women generally do. There's some exceptions to that, but on a balance of probabilities, that's how women typically behave. They're not king make makers, okay? All these women running around right now with the raw, I'm a queen, queen, boss girl, boss bitch, all that sort of stuff. These, these women think that they're queens. They're not king makers. They're not sitting around, generally speaking, waiting for you to get your game, sort out your life. If you're in your 20s, maybe. But if you're an older gentleman in your 30s, maybe in your 40s or 50s, they don't have patience for that. These women, they want to be with kings. They don't want to be king makers. Okay, that's the point of the whole women wait at the finish line and they pick the winners. That's essentially what we're talking about. Anyway, 
So these, so these gals, they just want guys to get it when it comes to life. Now, if these gals that are pretending to really care about men and their struggles, then they would organize rather than just saying what's already been said, not doing anything new or different with it. Like they're not innovating with it again. Then they would organize themselves into tens of thousands, march down to Capitol Hill, lobby changes on hostile laws that, you know, are, are pushing men out of the marriage marketplace. Cause they're like, why, why should I expose myself to that risk? I'll date. I'll go out with gals, spin plates, whatever, you know, whatever dating strategy they happen to build. But a lot of guys are like, why get married? There's no advantage to it, right? It's, it's all risk with very low reward. And it's the opposite for her. She's got very low risk and very high reward. So if, if these gals really cared about guys and their struggles when it, you know, when it comes to women, that's what they would be doing. Put on your pink pussy hats, march to Capitol Hill, Get the laws changed that destroy men with false DV charges, paternity fraud, Me Too's, family law issues, all that kind of stuff, right? As far as doing the work, gals can't tell guys to do the work. Guys don't listen to their moms, you know? Guys will listen to their dads when their dads say, stop being a slob, go to the gym and lose some damn weight, right? They'll listen to their old man, but their moms, not so much. They don't listen to women with stuff like that. Women have been telling their boys for years now, you're good enough, son. Someday a gal's going to come along and she's going to like you just for who you are. Men tell their sons the truth, right? So there's a big difference. Regurgitating information on TikTok, YouTube, et cetera. These are all social media platforms and using experiences that men have collected, organized, tested, and been sharing for thousands of years is more profitable. <clears throat> Excuse me. And make no mistake. A lot of the guys in this space, in the Mano Swamp, they like to lay claim to language, verbiage, ideas that they created. I, I have invented nothing here. I have just been paying attention to what's been going on, and I've just accumulated this vast basket of knowledge, and I now share it with you. I share it with you in podcasts. I've written the book for you guys. There's a follow-up coming up next year. I guarantee 15,000 years ago, there was men sitting around a campfire, maybe 20 feet from where this house is built right now, and having a conversation amongst themselves after a failed hunt, or maybe they lost, you know, 50% of their men to some war, you know, with a opposing tribe. And they sat there at the campfire with no food, empty stomachs, realizing they had to go back to the main camp where all the families were and the women and the children. And they were probably having a conversation along the lines of these girls, they don't care about our struggles. They're always going to pick the winners. Why does so-and-so get all the girls? Because he's the best hunter, because he's the one that kills the most of the opposing enemy. I'm sure some conversation like that happened 15 years. I did not invent that, okay? It's just an observation. It's a lot of the same thing in the Mano Swamp. A lot of the guys that will be like, well, that's my verbiage or that's my line or whatever. I can go back to the 1980s and there's pickup artists like these, these, these PUA guys that were on Oprah, uh, and other shows like that, uh, making the exact same statements that are made today, you know, 30 years later, Ross Jeffries, uh, there's a lot of guys in the space from, you know, back in the day when they first started making, you know, recordings of this. And there was a book. I remember this book, a buddy of mine ordered, um, one of my roommates, I think I was 27 or something like that. And we'd go out to the clubs and we'd have a good time sort of thing. And at some point on the radio, um, there was one of these, uh, dating guru guys who was talking on the radio station about his new book that came out. I can't remember the title of it for the life of me, but we ended up nicknaming it the Bible. Cause it was like, he got a copy of the book and then we all read it and we all sort of passed it around. And a lot of the same stuff that was in that book is talked about today. Right. So there's not a lot of new ideas, right? Like, um, it's a form of nostalgia, you know, for being honest, I'll get into that in a little bit. I got some other points from, uh, from my other computer. Um, where was I? Tested, been sharing thousands of years. It's obviously very profitable. It satiates uh, women's innate requirement for attention and getting resources for men, which is what they do. I mean, you look at the comments and these, and these guys, these guys are literally simping for these gals on social media. Oh, I'd love to find a girl like you. you oh, you just get it. <laughs> you, you guys think, you guys think that these chicks are going to be any different in family law if they get divorced? You think that they're going to be more patient for a guy that's running a bunch of girls behind the scene than, you know, the average, they're not special. They're just, they're just gals. They're all like, all women are pretty much like that. Right. 
Um, if they want to untie the knot and family law is going to enrich them by taking the kids away from the old man or filing a false DV charge, it's entirely possible. It's a tool in the toolkit and they may use it against you. So don't think that they're better than anybody else. They're, gals are gals. You know, the women are all the women sort of thing, as the guys like to say. <laughs> I really hope you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to watch the full length podcast, you can find that over here, that clip's from. If you're newer to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe over here and pin down below in the top comment. You'll find a bunch of useful links to my website, my supplement line books, and a bunch of other stuff. Have an amazing day. Peace out.